Hi guys, good morning. This is another Relax and Paint. I'm in my new studio today, so hopefully everything goes smooth and you can see what's going on and understand um, our project today. So it's kind of like a little falls in the air, so I wanted to do some other um, fall project, but I'm going to be learning this corn with you. I did it years ago, so hopefully you will be able to follow along and we have a good time together painting this little fall spray. Okay, so let's get started. So I have already pre-drawn, let me get some on some art paper here. So I kind of drew the areas of where I wanted the corn to be. So they're kind of in here. This is just great art paper. Again, it ready where you can paint it on any colored background you want. All right, so I pulled out some colors I wanted to share with you. Um, some yellow ochre, some daffodil yellow, and we went using multi-surface paint, okay? And I did put some floating medium there, some wicker white, and we can put a little bit of brown and berry wine. So let's a little bit uh, brown just for some earth tones, a little bit of berry wine for some red tones. And we're not making Indian corn, but we are going to put some colors in the background. I think that'll make it look good, okay? So I'm going to start out with a 16 flat. And I just made these ovals here, excuse me ovals so that you can see long skinny ovals and one of the things that I thought I would do was we're going to put some of the light color on there so let's let's make right in here the underneath coat of yellow ochre and make it kind of smooth all right could take that bound button down, but I like to pick it up and move it around. All right, so then we can come over here with some yellow ochre and pick up some for an umber. All right, see, I'm picking up some burnt umber on the side. Actually, this is bark brown. It's not quite as dark as burnt umber. Now I want that to be all the way around on the outer edge. Okay, and by doing that first corn, you can see where you're wanting to be. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and make this in the background. All right, so I'll restroke over the top corn later. Let's go a little bit longer. A little bit longer. All right. Now let's come on this side and get the yellow ochre and pick up some berry wine. Okay, so we're gonna come down along here and this is kind of dry. So I'm gonna dip into my floating medium. Floating medium is what we use instead of water. So most asked questions, what's that clear liquid? So I like, it's a thicker clear. It's the fluff that's inside this paint, guys, with no pigment in it. So we don't want to use water because that's going to make our strokes muddy with one stroke painting. And so what I'm showing you is, see, I need this to go smooth, and so I don't want to do water. So and especially on the paper, it's going to take it a little bit longer. Um, it's going to dry up and you're going to, we don't want to put water on there. So we muddy it up. Okay, so there's um, some shapes here. I should have, let's say if I did this again, I was thinking, overthinking it. But so I should come here. Oh, I might have to put some husk or something down there because this is on paper, I can't just paint over that. Okay, 
There we go. So what I should have done is put the two first and then come in here with the, let's pick up some yellow and daffodil yellow and yellow ochre. So I'm gonna come right down along here. There we go. One stroke painting means we blend and shade and highlight with every stroke. So you saw how those stroking got us extra shading. So we do it as we go and you have all that pretty shading, right? Now, what we wanna do is they kind of come in rows, but this is what I, I've done before is I picked out, let's get a smaller brush. Oops. So I'm gonna come in here with, dampen it first, lay it on the paper towel, get daffodil and a side stroke on white and I am got a 10, 10 flat here, okay? All right, so I'm going to make the kernels and they're gonna come up like this. See this? And every once in a while I get a little bit more white. I can get some yellow ochre on here and then come back and pick up some white again. So then this is what we're doing. We're just gonna go all along here and go for this effect, okay? I used to stagger it like a shingle in a roof and I realized that's not how it looks. But they do come in rows like this, all right? So let's pick up a little bit of for an umber, so I'm picking up some yellows and some burnt umber, and I can put a couple of these here and there. See that? All right, and I still have burnt umber on here. I even picked up a little bit of red from the side here. So let's pick it up again. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white, so I'm alternating. So when you say you're alternating, it means you switch it around some. So let's come over here, and this kernel is gonna show on its side, and over here also. All right. Okay, see that gives you that effect. So let's go over here and we're still gonna pick up some yellow, yellow ochre and occasionally I'll pick up some red. This 10 kind of works pretty good. It does look a little bit like Indian corn but I am going more for this just different shaded, like it's dried out. There's just some pretty colors. Let's see, let's get some white. So I can keep going like this. And then we're gonna have to shade on that edge a little bit later because we want this corn to look like it's behind. All right, we're going to come along here, little bits of red, or let's get some yellow ochre and brown. And I'm going to put some husk up there. So uh, then I have to come in here and put a little bit here. And this does look like Indian corn. I don't know why I said I'm not doing Indian corn. <laughs> okay. So you can either put the berry wine or you can put some brown in here. A little bit of brown. All right, so yellow ochre with a little bit of yellow over here. Okay, all right. 
So now we're going to come to the other side, put a little bit of white here and there. Now this has to totally dry before I shade it, float some color in there. So we're just going to do the husking on, then come back and get this really nice look that we want. Okay. And we're going for an effect, so it's just supposed to be kind of fun. So we're going to come all the way up. Now this tin isn't too bad. It makes it a nice, quick um, corn to make this happen. And so you definitely get the effect of corn, right? So I can come in here and there and get some white. Get the corn coming along the side here, right? Come, on, come over here a little bit more. Some yellow ochre and yellow. And that's right on the brown, but you know what? If you have dark, you can see light way better. Gives you a nice effect. Okay. So I can come over here and get some of those reds. Just a little bit, break it up. Isn't it kind of fun? And I'm showing you it can be really easy, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my angle brush. And we've got a 5 8 angle. We're going to lay it on the paper towel. And we're going to get a husk look. And so we're going to pick up some white and go right in here, get some brown, dark brown, yellow ochre, and then more white. Okay, with... They get kind of white looking when they um, start drying out. So I just picked up floating medium. I dipped into it and came back here. All right. So now I got a problem over here. So I'm going to go chisel, flat, flat, and pick it up. Okay. Now this is what I want you to see. See the toe? I'm going to let the toe get some of this white. I can pick up the brown or brown and the heel the toe okay so we're going to come right here push stand up push okay isn't that kind of cool it's kind of like ribbon but we don't have to use ribbon so now i'm going to come right in here let's put a little bit more in here and a little bit here and see the white if i stroke in some white as i'm bringing the white down it gives it a nice look Push, push, and stand up. So yellow ochre, bark brown, and come over here, side stroke, and get floating medium. You see me get floating medium? I hope you're thinking about the holidays coming up. Some ha sad and some happy times. My daddy's passed away the, a couple months ago, and... He won't be there, but he'll be there in spirit. So that's pretty awesome, right? So I'm going to chisel in there, push down, and stand up and curl. So that one's kind of straight. Now, it's easier for you to turn around and turn it around. Yeah, keep coming over here. Lots of paint. Come over and get some white, medium, grab some white. And the white's here on the toe. Push. Push and stand up. All right. All right. I think I'm going to come down again and then stand up so it kind of matches over there. All right. Now that gives us, I want to erase this later, but I'm just going to show you how to come in here and erase that out. This, it would be fun to put on a pillow. There's all kinds of things that you can do 
on fabric. I put this on like mat board. Um, lots of shading. I need to blow dry it a minute. There you go. That white's pretty wet there. What I am going to do is I can get a script liner, a two script liner. Okay, I'm going to let's get some of this berry wine. That's going to make a nice little color. Okay, so I can come right around here and tie this up. Okay. So this is pretty wet up here still, but there we go. Then I can make a second little loop there. And I can come right up here. I know this is really wet. Okay, so there. And we're going to tie a knot there. It's got a little bit of white because the white was so wet. So I can still go back over it again. And oops, 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 oops. maybe I ought to splatter some. That would make it nice on the paper. And you could do that on the canvas too. There you go. And so let's take let's take a three quarter inch brush, actually, so we can fit it in there. Where's my 16 bits of 16? Okay, so a couple of the little things that can happen here is we are going to do a little bit of shading. So we're going to take floating medium. Okay, let's pick up a little bit of the burn umber and work it in back and forth. And we can take and Put a little bit of shadow here. Make it nice. Oh, isn't that nice? There we go. A little bit here. I'm doing it all on the left side. Do you see this? Or, or yeah, one side. Just pick out one side. And we're going to come along here. All right. So see that gave it a little bit of a shadow. You can bring a little bit right in there. Okay, now remember I said let's float in the, around here on the corn. That's what I was trying to dry. There's the corn. And we can get the edge of the corn there. See how it lifted that corn up? Now I should have done that before I put the, the burgundy in there. But I can go right under here. Show you in shadow in there. Oop. Yeah, light there. There we go. We can also shadow right there. Isn't that kind of fun? Okay. I'm going to bring this right in here and along there. You can also come in here, guys. Oops, I got red. I didn't get rid of got wine, berry wine. So yeah, I can put in a little bit of shading there. All right, so it's kind of fun. You can put a couple of little flowers or no flowers. I just want to show you very quickly, we can make something that looks like fall. You can put it in your kitchen year round, or you can just... Uh, add it with some pumpkins, all right? So I'm just going to sign it and put 2022. So I remember what I did, and there we go. So let's see how your corn shows up. Paint it and post it on folk art on my Donna Dewberry's official One Stroke Facebook group. See you then. Thank you. Mm -hmm.